Space junk is one of the most troublesome issues in space exploration and astronomy. And worst of all, that it's caused by mankind and almost impossible to solve. We have a somewhat risky environment. Almost all professional sources have mentioned that space debris is one of the most terrifying sources of danger when exploring space. In fact, being hit by a sugar cube of space debris is the equivalent of standing next to an exploding hand grenade. And the problem is only getting worse with every passing year. The International Space Station has made frequent moves to stop the space debris problem, yet it's still turning out to be quite difficult even with all their resources at hand. Space junk was on a collision course with the International Space Station. Spotted so late, there was no time to move out of the way. The probabilities are still in the red threshold, and we are planning to have you shelter in place. For years now, the ISS has been dodging collisions. Some of the latest maneuvers took place in April 2011 and January 2012. What may not be so obvious is that many of these near misses are due to fragments from a single event in 2009 that shocked the aerospace community. For example, on February 10th that same year, the defunct Russian military communications satellite Cosmos 2251 struck the solar panel of a commercial American communication satellite known as Iridium-33. The panel shattered and Iridium-33 tumbled out of control. Cosmos 2251 disintegrated and this caused a huge spatial catastrophe, sending out more than 2,000 pieces of space debris with sizes larger than 10 centimeters hurling out hundreds of thousands of smaller fragments that cannot be tracked from Earth due to their small size. And that represents the main problem with space debris. A single centimeter of fragment is enough to heavily lacerate whole satellites because of their laser-fast traveling speed. The energy of a collision is overwhelmingly determined by the speed at which things strike each other. And since these things are traveling so fast, they gain an incredible amount of momentum due to the lack of friction in space and keep themselves in the same tidally locked cycle of roaming around the Earth. Another problem with space debris is also the wide variety of things that you'll find up there in space. That includes obsolete spacecraft, chunks of satellites and rockets, momentum flywheels, nuclear reactor cores, and fragments of rockets that have broken up or collided with other objects. Basically, space debris is anything that's been created by man and that isn't in active use. And given the fact that precisely pulling things out of space is so difficult, it's almost impossible to attempt to take out space debris without risking being assaulted by it, and thus risking lives and creating even more space debris in the process. Sizes of space debris range from microscopic particles to obsolete spacecraft and rocket bodies that stand several stories tall. Considering that a tiny paint fleck in space can crack a space shuttle window, you can imagine the damage caused by a giant rocket fragment crashing into the U.S. National Security Satellite at 21,000 miles per hour. What makes space debris even more dangerous is how most of the time you won't be able to see it coming at you. Space debris moves about 10 times faster than a bullet, and no one can see a bullet coming. Although debris smaller than one millimeter in size does not generally pose a hazard to spacecraft, it can still damage optics and solar arrays. So while a spacecraft may survive being hit by tiny debris, such hits can result in catastrophe and mission failure. So what are the causes of space debris? Why is there so much space debris up there that makes things so complicated for astronauts and space missions? Object breakup, as we mentioned in the beginning, is one of the major reasons of space junk. As of August 2007, there have been 194 breakups and 51 events in which debris was shed from an object. Since that data compilation, many more are believed to have occurred. Breakups can be caused by explosions and collisions. Explosions can result from residual propellant, overheated batteries, collisions, or in some cases, deliberate destruction of the satellite. The cause of approximately 22% of observed breakups is unknown. Approximately 70,000 objects of 2 centimeters in size have been observed in the 850 to 1,000 kilometer altitude band above Earth. NASA has hypothesized that these objects are frozen bits of nuclear reactor coolant leaking from several Russian ROARSATs, also known as radar ocean reconnaissance satellites. Now, what dangers could this pose to future space missions and exploration? It should go without saying that possible damage is massive and all international space organizations should work and strive to work around them. The Space Shuttle Endeavour is scheduled to ferry the first U.S.-built component to the International Space Station in orbit several months from now. 
A steady stream of modules and structural elements will follow over the next five years. If the station remains in space, it will eventually collide with a piece of debris. Maybe by then the station will be empty, its human occupants moved on to other pursuits. But maybe not. Some of the most troublesome pieces up there are those rockets and satellites that for whatever reason have exploded in orbit. At the end of its life, a spacecraft contains a little bit of leftover fuel from its launch or orbital maneuvers. The fuel tanks deteriorate over time or are punctured by debris. The leftover fuels mix together and explode. In the worst case on record, the explosion of a European Ariane rocket produced more than 500 pieces of debris big enough to disable a spacecraft. This is what originally caused the NASA to pay attention to debris. A five-inch hole in the wall of a space shuttle is enough to turn a mission into a failure. And that's what a very small piece of space junk can cause. Imagine a bigger one. Today, the risk of such a disaster for a satellite or small craft like a shuttle is relatively low, though Mir, the Russian space station launched in 1986, has been hit by objects large enough to dent the inner wall of the crew compartment. But the International Space Station, much larger than Mir, will be a plump target for debris. Each decade that it's in orbit, according to a recent study, the station will have about a 20% chance of undergoing a critical penetration that could kill a crew member or destroy the station. And the chances will increase as more objects are launched into space. In contrast, the chances of a commercial airliner accident in the United States are about 1 in 3 million. This eventually leads to a problem known as a collisional cascade, a sort of domino effect with collisions where one collision causes debris to fly around and crash into another object, causing yet another collision, explosion, more debris, and so on. Technically, a cascade begins only when a piece of debris formed in one collision causes a subsequent fragmentation as a yet undocumented occurrence. But no one disputes that space is becoming a more dangerous place. Two years ago, an old piece of an unexploded rocket hit the boom of a French communication satellite, sending the satellite tumbling. Though it was eventually controlled, the possibility remains up in the air and worrying everybody. Many of the objects released into space in the lowest orbits, like Collins's camera, have fallen back to Earth. The upper atmosphere, where the space shuttle flies, gradually slows objects down. They re-enter the atmosphere and burn up within a few months or years. But a few hundred miles higher, the atmosphere is so thin that it isn't effective for cleanup. Spacecraft that are launched into orbits at this height may stay there forever. Space is, after all, not the friendliest environment for Earthlings and shuttles. So what are the solutions to the problem? We know it's a difficult situation given all the tangents and variables and ways that it could possibly go wrong. However, this is an old problem, and humans have been pondering what they should do to solve it for quite a while. One of the few solutions to this problem will be launching special satellites to clean up space. However, this is not a one-size-fits-all solution given that it can generate a lot of controversy due to political sensitivity. For example, a satellite, even a defunct one, remains the property of the people who launched it. So you just can't start pulling objects out of the sky even if they pose a danger to your spacecraft. Secondly, there is an obviously military side to all this, and that's not taking into account the military aspect of it. We humans enjoy militarizing almost anything that comes in contact with our hands. That's why if someone had enough power to pull out dead satellites from orbit, that method could also be used to take down live ones as well. We know that space junk is a silent catastrophe that might prove to be space travel's undoing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to turn on notifications for more great space videos like this one.